Good morning, everyone. Okay. Good morning. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of yesterday's lesson before we move on to our new topic. So there were four blood groups. What were they? Good, Kelsey. Good, Lorado. Okay, good. So we have A, B, A, B, and O. And who can A give blood to? Good. So A can give blood to A and A, B. And who can O give blood to? Right. So O gives blood to everyone. And then AB does what? What's so special about AB? Okay, Leah. Right. So, yes, AB can receive blood from everyone. Okay, Derek, that's no problem. Okay, Aaliyah doesn't take health science. There should be a general science option. Okay, so today we're going to move on to... Yes, Jameen. So today we're going to move on to the heart. And if we remember back when we did muscles, when, well, when you would have done muscles with your teachers, what is what kind of muscle is the heart made up of? Good, Amari. Cardiac muscle. Yes, Rajay. Good, Javion and religious. So the heart is made up of cardiac muscles. Okay, so our objectives for today is, okay, Trishon, if you are in, oh, where is the general science option? Go back onto the Bahamas Virtual Learning Center page or the ministries page, and you should see a general science option. Oh, there isn't one. I'm not sure where it went, but it should have been there. Yes, I will tell you when to write. No, you don't have to write the objectives. Okay, so today we'll talk about observing and identifying the parts of the heart. Then we're going to explain the relationship between diet and the proper functioning of the heart. And then I want you to draw a conclusion based on a person's diet and their heart. Okay, so I want you to look at this quick video on the function of the heart. Hello friends, welcome to a new video. Today, we're going to get to know the engine in our body. Today, we're going to get to know the human heart. The heart is the most special muscle we have. It's situated a little to the left from the center of our chest, between our lungs, and is in an oblique position, positioned diagonally. We say that it's very special because it sends blood all over our body. Blood delivers oxygen and nutrients we need to live to all of our cells. A heart is a type of pump. Like the ones we use to inflate the wheels on our bikes. The only thing is that instead of pumping air, it pumps blood. The heart is divided into two parts. The right part and the left part separated by a cellular wall so they are not connected internally. Each one of these parts has two chambers or cavities. The upper cavities are called right and left atrium and the lower cavities are called right and left ventricle. The heart also has four kind of doors which are called valves. These valves open to let blood in they close so this blood can't go back. Now we've got to know the most important parts of the heart, but do you know how it works? It all commences 
in the right atrium, where the deoxygenated blood, meaning it has very little oxygen and nutrients, enters the heart. Then it goes through the first valve up to the right ventricle. Once it is here, the heart sends the blood directly to the lungs. And it's in this moment where the blood is oxygenated and it's filled with oxygen and nutrients. When it is already oxygenated, it goes back to the heart, reaching the left atrium. From where it will pass through the third valve until the last cavity, the left ventricle. Finally, the heart sends this now oxygenated blood through the fourth and last valve towards the rest of the body and it starts again. To understand how our heart beats, we only need to imagine that our hand is a heart and that when it opens up, it fills up with blood. And when it's closed, it pumps that blood outwards. When blood exits our heart, it flows through our whole body, through blood vessels, and there are three types. Arteries, veins, and capillary vessels. Arteries deliver oxygen and nutrients-rich blood to all our organs in our body. Veins take that blood, low in oxygen, back to the heart and the capillary vessels, which are very small connected arteries with veins and cells. Fun fact! Do you know approximately how much a human heart weighs? Well, it's 450 grams, almost half a kilo. The truth is that the heart is the engine in our circulatory system and is an incredibly strong muscle. It's able to beat more than a hundred thousand times a day. So cool! We can't say goodbye without giving you a tip. We need to... Okay, so... Okay, so if you don't have, if you already have notes from your school, that's okay. You don't have to write it. You could just follow along. Like the video said, the heart is a muscle and it's located to the lip, the, a little to the left. Yes, Jenny. It's located to the little of the left in the middle of your chest and it's about the size of your fist. So we know that there are muscles all over the body in our arms, our legs, our back. But the heart muscle is special, like we said, that it's made up of cardiac muscle, and that's special because of what it does. The heart does, the muscle that the heart is made of doesn't, yes, you can, doesn't get tired. It's called myogenic. Okay, so you can ask your questions in the chat, and I'll answer it just like that. I don't know where the tab is for general science. Yes, please write this. The heart sends blood around your body. The blood provides your body with the oxygen and nutrients it needs. And that oxygen, yes, write it. And the oxygen comes from those red blood cells that are inside of the blood. And we know that the blood also carries away waste. Okay, so when you're finished done writing this part, just let me know by saying done. Yes, Amrian, blood is really red, but blood can also be dark blue. And I'll show you that later on in this lesson. Okay, so we have a few people that's done already. Okay, Savion, it actually is dark blue if there is less oxygen inside of the blood. How does the white blood cell, how is, does the white blood cell consider a blood cell? Because remember we have, even, we have, it's considered a blood cell because it's located in the blood. So do we have to submit? Um, Grace, um, when we give assignments, then you would submit them to your teachers. But this lesson doesn't have an assignment, per se. Okay, so we can move on. Jenny, good question. 
You don't feel that because it's going through vessels. Okay, I'm waiting on Addis and Christine and Michael. CC waiting. Yes, you can have one more minute, Janisha. Yes, the heart, your heart is the size of your fist. Okay, John, so what happens if your heart beats slow? Then that means that it's not pumping enough blood as it should to get around the body. That's fine, Ashton, I'm waiting. So a pulse is a beat of, is a heartbeat. How many beats does your heart beat in a minute? So the heart beats 70 to 90 times per minute. So if it beats fast and you are tired, no, if your heart is beating fast, remember you're excited. So if your heart, usually the average heart beats 70 to 90 minutes, if it's beating over 120, most likely you have done something that was strenuous on exercise that may have increased the heartbeat and caused it to beat much faster. Yes, Nathan, can the body only have blue blood? No. Why can I feel my pulse in my wrist? Because remember, blood is continuously flowing. Yes, we do. I'll show you when a person has blue blood. So, Perry, um, it will be, still be the same size of their fist. Uh, Alexa, so if your heart is beating too fast, it just needs to calm down. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's once it calms down, then the body would, or the beats will go back to normal. Right? If the blood stops in one vessel, yes. So if your heart beats 53. Okay, so if your heart three beats 53 beats per minute, then the doctors would know that there is something wrong and your heart is beating below the average. Those because, Judah, because those are the pressure points. No one actually knows when their heart is about to stop. Does your pulse disappear and appear in different places? No. Okay, so we'll get into all of that. Those good questions, like Emery Ann's question. Yes, Kevano. So it grows with you. 100 beats per hour would be pretty slow because remember, it'd be 70 to 90 times per minute. I remember there are 60 minutes in an hour. Okay, so I can move on. Good. Okay, so our heart is like a pump. Most people compare it to a basketball pump where if we look at this diagram, yes, you can. Look at the diagram. You see that the arrows from the top, the blue arrows, Yes, come on. The blue arrows are going from the body, which is at the right side of the heart, to the lungs. And we will assume that it's going to the lungs to do what? Right, Amari, get oxygenated. So we want our the blue blood, which is low in the oxygen, to go to the lungs to actually pick up more oxygen. So it says your heart is sort of like a pump or two pumps in one. The right side of your heart receives blood from the body and the pumps it to the lungs. And the left side of the heart does the exact opposite. No, you don't have to draw the pictures. It receives blood from the lungs and pumps it out to the body. So if we follow the arrows, we see the blue side, which is the side that doesn't have as much oxygen as it should. It goes to the lungs to pick up the oxygen. And then if we follow the red arrows, that means... The oxygen is now in place and the blood is now bright red. So it goes through to the left side of the heart to be pumped through the body to just drop all that oxygen off again and just does the same thing over and over. Yes. Do not draw the picture. You can just write the note. And one important thing I want you to pay attention to. If you look at this diagram, you see the right side and the left side. But as we are facing it, it's actually the opposite. So when it's time for BJC and you have to label the heart diagram, I want you to do the opposite. So if your left hand is on this side, you know that you should label the heart on the right side. So everything that's opposite to you is how you would label the heart. If you have the notes, you don't have to write it. The, it, it, a, Perry, it appears green. What happens when oxygenated blood mixes with deoxygenated blood? Okay, so in, a term in biology is called diffusion. So an example, diffusion is when particles move from one area of high concentration to a next, which has low concentration. When oxygenated blood, which is full of oxygen, moves, meets deoxygenated blood, that oxygen moves to 
the other side where it can be equal. Why do they compare the heart with a pump? So, for example, we have this pump here pumping air. The heart pumps blood. So a pump pumps air, but the heart pumps blood. So it does the same action, just with different substances. And my blood comes out blue or green. Emrian, you should go to the doctor. <laughs> okay, Aldrini, that's fine. Okay, Lorada, we'll get to that at the end. I actually want you to keep that thought. Okay, so most people are done. Okay, so if your body isn't getting enough air, what happens to the oxygenated blood? It would lose oxygen. Okay, so let's go. Let's move on. So we have the pumping action. Just like how this pump is pumping air into this balloon, the heart pumps blood into our bodies. And right now, this video will show us the pumping action, because some people ask, how does it pump blood? Your heart is a pump. It's a muscular organ about the size of your fist and is located slightly left of center in your chest. Your heart is divided into the right and left side. The division protects oxygen-rich blood from mixing with oxygen-poor blood. Together, your heart and blood vessels comprise your cardiovascular system, which circulates blood and oxygen around your body. In fact, your heart pumps about five quarts of blood every minute, and it beats about 100,000 times in one day. That's about 35 million times in a year. Oxygen poor blood, blue blood, returns to the heart after circulating through your body. The right side of the heart, composed of the right atrium and ventricle, collects and pumps the blood to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries. The lungs refresh the blood with a new supply of oxygen, making it turn red. Oxygen-rich blood, red blood, then enters the left side of the heart, composed of the left atrium and ventricle, and is pumped through the aorta to the body to supply tissues with oxygen. Four valves within your heart keep your blood moving the right way. The tricuspid, mitral, pulmonary, and aortic valves work like gates on a fence. They open only one way and only when pushed on. Each valve opens and closes once per heartbeat, or about once every second. A beating heart contracts and relaxes. Contraction is called systole, and relaxing is called diastole. During systole, your ventricles contract, forcing blood into the vessels going to your lungs and body, much like ketchup being forced out of a squeeze bottle. The right ventricle contracts a little bit before the left ventricle does. Your ventricles then relax during diastole and are filled with blood coming from the upper chambers, the left and right atria. Then the cycle starts over again. Your heart is nourished by blood too. Blood vessels called coronary arteries extend over the surface of your heart and branch into smaller capillaries. Here you can see just the network of blood vessels that feed your heart with oxygen-rich blood. Your heart also has electrical wiring which keeps it beating. Electrical impulses begin high in the right atrium and travel through specialized pathways to the ventricles, delivering the signal to pump. The conduction system keeps your heart beating in a coordinated and normal rhythm, which in turn keeps blood circulating. The continuous exchange of oxygen-rich blood with oxygen-poor blood is what keeps you alive. Okay, good. So I see so you have some questions. Let's see. Okay, let's see. What happens? <laughs> the purples. Okay, so that's not purple. That's dark blue. So we said that the video said that one side of the heart um, push, pumps deoxygenated blood and the opposite side pumps oxygenated blood. So when blood does not have oxygen in it, it is a dark blue color. When it goes to the lungs and it puts, picks up oxygen, it, it changes color from dark blue to bright red. When oxygen has, when blood has oxygen in it, it is dark, it is bright red, sorry. So the septum alginine. No, we only have two different colors. What if you're, okay, so the blood prevents, the body pre the, prevents oxygenated blood from mixing with the oxygenated blood. So when we only see red blood, that's because that oxygen comes from most likely if we have a cut, remember this is part of your body, oxygen that 
blood that has oxygen in it is pumping throughout your body. So when we get a cut here, we expect that blood to be bright red. No, Daniel. Can your heart stop beating? You can get at least a couple of seconds. So we noticed, like, if we watched a movie and a person was on a hospital table and their heart stopped beating, they had a machine that actually shocked the heart and tried to pump that electricity in to get the heart to beat again. Remember, if you, wa if you were paying attention in the videos, it said that the heart gives off electrical signals. So that machine that they use, defibrillators, is what helps the heart to pick up that electrical signal again, right? So like if you were jumping a battery of a car, it's the same thing. You see, they put the cables on it. It gives it a jump start. Jariah, okay, so if you get cut in the blood is blue, then you would know that that was not <clears throat> oxygen filled. Right, Judah, so when they say clear. <clears throat> okay, so let's get into the part of the heart. So the heart is made up of four different chamber, to four different blood areas, and we call them chambers. There are two chambers on each side of the heart. One chamber is on the top, and the other chamber is on the bottom. The two chambers on the top is called the atria, and in this diagram, I have it highlighted where we have the right atrium and the left atrium. If you're talking about only one, you would say the right atria or the left atria. The atria are the chambers that fill with the blood returning, yes, you can write this, returning to the heart from the blood body and the lungs. And the heart has a left atrium, uh, atria, sorry, and a right atria. Yes. So we notice that the right side of the heart is dark blue, which means that it's carrying blood that does not have, that is not rich in oxygen. So we know that that blood is coming from the body and going to the lungs. And then on the opposite side, which is the left side, we notice that that is bright red. So that means that it has already been to the lungs, picked up the oxygen, and now it's going to drop off that oxygen to the rest of the body. Yes, it does appear to be purple, but it's actually blue. Yes, Rudolph. So if you get shocked, why do you die? Because remember, that's different volts of electricity going into your body. That'd be too much electricity for your heart. Yes, Daniel. Yes, you can, Renan. Once you have, Renan, once you have um, the same blood type. When, so when it touch oxygen. Right, so when your blood picks up oxygen or absorbs oxygen, it changes the color from dark blue to bright red. Yes, Samari. Yes, Ashton. No, you don't have to draw the pictures. Just write the note. So we know that the top part of the heart is called the right atrium and the left atrium. So we have to. You can actually, Callis, you can take a picture of the notes if that's possible for you or a screenshot. No, it's to Ashton. Okay, so when you're shocked, remember the video said that the heart has electrical signals. Those, the defibrillator is just sending another electrical signal to start your heart again. If you take some dioxin in your blood and leave it to absorb oxygen, it will change color. Yes, do run. Okay, good. Colin. Okay, so remember when you're done, say done. Yes, Alexa. Okay, so, yeah, so it's not one specific organ. It would be a system, and that's the excretory or excretory system. Okay, Derek, that's fine. Okay, so the heart has four chambers. Naya, I think that's your name, or Naya. We'll get into that later on in the lesson. Okay, so what if the valves don't open or close in the heart? Then we know that the, yes, Amanda, then we know that the blood won't be able to flow. No, Aaliyah. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so the two chambers at the bottom of the heart are called ventricles. The heart has a left ventricle. I'll go back for you, Lorado and Michael. So the heart has a left ventricle and a right ventricle. So just like how it had the right atrium and the left atrium, it has the bottom part, which would be the right ventricle and the left ventricle. So those would be our four chambers. Yes, I'll go back for you, Derek, at the end, and Alexia. Anybody that's not done, 
I'll go back through it at the end when we have more time. So we have four chambers, two to the top and two to the bottom. So the two to the top are called the right atrium and the left atrium. And then the two to the bottom are called the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Okay, so when you're done, say done. Okay, good. So it looks like, okay, all right, there it. No, no, Jordan. No, 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 no. The brighter it is, the round, the healthier it is. That means it's oxygen rich. Okay, so that would be the pulmonary vein diabion. So the blue is right, Amanda. Right, Joshua. No, Ashton. Okay, Irvin, so that would be a problem. Then that mean Emmanuel, then that means your body lacks iron and your body your blood wouldn't be able or the red blood cells wouldn't be able to pick up the oxygen that is needed. Right, Shavana. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. So we have the left and right ventricles and the right and left atriums. So now in the middle of your heart, this muscle that's highlighted, the pink muscle in the middle, is called the septum. And the septum is important but because it separates the heart into two chambers, um, into the two sides, sorry, and prevents the oxygenated blood from mixing with the deoxygenated blood. So running down the middle of the heart is a thick wall of muscle called the septum. The septum's job is to separate the left side and the right side of the heart. So that it appears to be green because of our skin and the color of the blood. Okay, so iron is a mineral that we would pick up in different foods that our body needs to produce or to help hemoglobin do its job, which would be to absorb oxygen. Also in liver and kale, vitamins. Okay, Romato, that would mean that there was some mixing and then there's a problem. No, Duran, does the heart need iron to function? The blood needs iron to function. Then we'd have some mixing going on, Carlos, and then that would serve as a problem. Yes, Romato, so what if we didn't have oxygen in our blood? Then that means the body cells are not getting the oxygen and the organs are not getting the oxygen that it needs, and that person could put, would potentially die, actually. Yes, that is... Sometimes it's not a bad thing, Alexa. Depends on how much blood that it is. And then sometimes it's just a normal thing because it's a scratching of the throat. So what cavity is your heart in? The thoracic cavity or the chest cavity? I'm not sure about that, Ashton. No, no, it's iron, Amanda. Yes, Scalia. So what if the septum got damaged? Then we know that the two blood types were, were the two the deoxygenated blood and the oxygenated blood would mix. Yeah, so we can say that it's located in the chest cavity or the thoracic cavity. So you have seven to ten pints of blood in your body. So that would be if you go to the ice to the gas station and you see the little white container that has ice cream, you have seven to ten of them that you can fill with blood and that would account for all of the blood inside of your body. Yes, Daniel, if you drink too much then that valve would stop the blood from going where it's supposed to go. Because, okay, Emmanuel, we get into that, okay? Okay, so everyone should be done with this part. No, Latrell. It helps to keep the, the blood flowing, Lorado. Okay, so next, let's go. Okay, so now we're talking about the valves. And um, what the valves are, uh, act, it acts like a door. So we want blood to flow the right way. When blood passes through a valve, that valve prevents it from flowing the opposite way or backwards. Um, no, you don't have to write all of this. I just want you to write um, in the second paragraph. No, in the second paragraph where it says a valve lets something in and keeps it there by closing. Think of walking through a door. The door shuts behind you as it keeps you from going backward. That's the only part that I want you to write. Okay, so the atria and ventricles work as a team. Yes, Judah. The atria fills with the blood and dumps it into the ventricle. The ventricles then squeeze, pumping blood out of the heart. While the ventricles are squeezing, the atria refill and get ready for the next contraction. So think of this. Somebody opening and closing your, their hands. 
That's how the heart is continuously pumping. Yes, you can, Alexa. So when the blood gets pumped, how does it know which way to go? So when your blood rely, your blood re relies on four special valves inside the heart. Yes, Michael. The valves keep the blood from flowing backwards. So it pushes the blood in the, in the direction that we want it to go. A valve lets something in and keeps it there by closing. Like walking through a door, the door shuts behind you and keeps you from going backwards. Then, Sean, in that case, Sean asked, what if the valves are weak? Then we know that the blood or the valves would not shut properly and that would have a backwards flow. So what happens is the blood flows backwards. Think if you were standing upside down on your head. You know, when people say, oh, don't stand on your head, all the blood going one way. We don't want the blood to go one way. We want it to have a continuous flow or circular flow around the body. No. Around. Okay, so where does blood generate from? It generates from the blood cells or the bone marrow. No, we don't need that for our BJC. It's just, all you need to know is that we have four special valves. You don't have to pay attention to those, the specific names of the valves in BJC. Because now it's a continuous flow. Who asked a good question? Sorry. Okay, so Perry, blood is actually in the brain, but if there is a leakage or an injury to the brain, then that's a problem. Yes, you can feel your own heart beating. If you cover your air, you can hear it. And if you put your hand across your left chest, you can feel it. I Oh, the iron Durant. I think we have one more slide after this. Okay, so if you don't feel it, Angel, you can actually place your hand here or you can place it here. Yes, I will go back, Derek. Okay, so if the brain cannot communicate with the heart, then it cannot tell it to beat. If a person dies, does the blue color take over? Yes. What do you mean you can't feel your own heart? Because you can't feel the beating if you put your hands on the chest. No, you cannot switch the heart with a creature because of the blood cells, Quentin. Thank you, Durant. Is someone is brain dead? Do blood still pump around the body? Yes, the heart, the heart is still pumping. Can a person die and their heart still beats? No, because after, because if your heart was removed from your body, that person would die. On the topic of valves, of course, you know, heart prevent valves from being turned inside out. Good. So when someone says that a vein in their head, for instance, had burst, is it because of too much blood? Right. So the pressure causes. I mean, remember, veins are very thin and fragile. The pressure from that blood caused it to burst. It's called an aneurysm. Yes, Jameson. Right, Sean. Good. Grace. It's just that some of the muscle tissue didn't connect, Aaliyah. Can someone die with a bullet to the stomach and not to the heart? Can someone die with a bullet to the stomach and not to the heart? Yes. If someone dies with the blood, so, so, so. No. Can you die? Yes, you can die from aneurysm. So what is a pacemaker? A pacemaker helps the heart to beat when the heart isn't beating as it should. Depends on where the vein is given. Okay, can you, you can. Ask it in the question and answer section. I'll answer it for you when the lesson ends. If someone gets the heart taken out for a minute, place it back in. We don't, they don't take it out. They actually work on the heart while it is in the chest. Yes, Perry. Yes, Lorado. How long can somebody live after their heart has stopped beating? They won't be living once their heart has stopped. Your hands change color from the iron. Yes. So if you have low iron, your hands will be really pale. I will get that video for you, Alexa. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so we, we are not writing it. I think so, Horatio. I'm not sure. No, Duran. Yes. So it's actually two more slides added. So we have five minutes. Your heart is at the center. Of, we're not, we are not writing this. Your heart is at the center of your cardiovascular system. It is involved in many of the daily functions that bring your body to life. So having a healthy heart is vital to your overall health. Two of the simplest yet most important ways to help your heart are through health, healthy eating, healthy foods, and 
dieting or exercising. Okay, so we don't, we're not writing this. We're just going to go through it. So ways to keep your heart healthy. You can choose to eat healthy fats. Fats, so despite what you may have heard, some fats are actually good for you. Like olive oil or canola oil, which would have mean they came from vegetables. Eating whole grain foods, eating plenty of fruits and vegetables. Preparing meat healthy, like baking or broiling or roasting and not frying. And then eating beans and choosing low-fat dairy and eating foods that have a lot of protein. So we know all of the healthy foods that we should eat. What kind of foods shouldn't we eat that can damage the heart? Yes, Joshua, that's exactly what that means. Judah, I'll get the video for you. Right. So if you eat a lot of fatty foods or a lot of junk foods, they can clog your arteries and cause problems for your heart. Good. So what shouldn't you eat? Foods with a lot of sodium. So that's, remember, sodium would be salt or flavors food with spices. No salt seasonings instead of salt. Watch out for prepackaged foods like sausage, canned foods, and processed foods. Because remember, those foods have a lot of chemicals and sodium. Fats, which would be fatty meats, whole milk, butter, lard, and coconut and palm oil. Microwave popcorn, frozen pizza, margarine. All of those are bad for us. Added sugar. So, no, we don't have to write it. So many of us like to drink sodas. Sodas are very bad for us. So sweet treats, donuts, ice cream, anything that has too much sugar can cause problems for us. And then alcohol. Alcohol thins the blood. So we don't want too much of that. Right, Joshua? So that means that there's too much fat around that area because now emmanuel your body's at rest yes we know that our mari but we still drink soda anyway so what we can do to combat that is if we want to if we like to drink lots of soda we can actually drink lots of water so for every soda that you drink you should actually combat that with two glasses of water right Derek? people say that ice cream is good for you ice cream is filled with sugar and the whole country of being an afro even Okay, so one more minute. Let's go to our last slide. So I want you to think about this. What do you think would be the condition of the heart in the person on top and then the person on the bottom based on their diet? So we have two images. One person looks like he's not eating healthy. He probably has a bad diet because of his weight. And then the second person is healthy. What do you think would be the condition of the person's heart on top? Is their heart in a good position or a bad position? And in the bottom, right? So that person would have, right? The person on top heart would be in a bad position. It has to pump extra hard to get that blood around the fat and all of the high cholesterol. And the bottom would be good because this person is fit, probably exercises and has a good diet. Okay, good, everyone. So that is the end of our lesson. Goodbye. <laughs>
primary, preschool, secondary students, you have the option to go to any one of these links. Let's say we are in grade 12. And so you would have seen the schedule that we have here. And so they have, for example, period one, you have the virtual learning orientation. And then for period two, which starts at 10 o'clock, you have biology. They have the topic there for you. Period three, 11 o'clock to 11.55, you have mathematics. They have the topics there for you and so on and so forth. Uh, it's very detailed for you. It has the objectives of the lesson, and then it also has your learning resources, the lesson resources, whether that's a video or a PowerPoint or a worksheet. Now, one of the things I want to advise you about is if you are going to be a virtual student, there are a few tools that you need to make sure and ensure that you have. And so one of those things, first of all, is internet connection. You want to make sure that you are uh connected where you're not dropping off during a class or if you are trying to get into a live classroom, you are not denied access. So you want to make sure you have a strong internet connection. Secondly, maybe you may not have a laptop or a desktop. You may have a phone that you're using or a tablet that you're using. Now, if you're using any one of those devices, you want to make sure that you are able to download the, any app that would allow you to access or open Word documents, PowerPoints, or any PDF that your teachers might have sent or put up on the website for you. So those things you want to make sure are in place. One, internet connection. And secondly, whatever device that you have, ensure that you have access to any one of the apps that will allow you to open up any of the resources the teachers would have placed on the website for you for your learning experience. And so one of the things that um, I also want to encourage you to do is to be disciplined enough to actually follow anything that your students, not your students, your teachers rather, would have put up on the website. Also, you wanna make sure and check your emails. Discipline is very important as a student or being a student in the virtual environment. Uh, not everything in the physical school where you have a teacher who's constantly saying, make sure and check your homework, make sure you did the assignment. A lot of the responsibility is gonna be on you as a student. So you wanna make sure that you are disciplined enough to check your emails as much as possible to see if they have sent any notes, any assignments, anything that you might have to do pre the classes that you um, will be joining in the virtual school, as well as completing assignments. It's not going to be where you're actually physically writing on a paper and then coming to school and turning that paper in. You want to make sure that whatever tools they would have used, whatever resources they would have used to give you that homework and assignment, you are able to attach the assignment in the email if that's where they're using, if they're using an educational platform. For instance, at Moto, you want to learn how to now submit those assignments. So aside from the virtual learning and the website, maybe you want to take one or two moments and just look up a YouTube video on how to attach an email or how to attach and submit an assignment for any one of the educational platforms that your teacher might be using. And so one of the advantages that uh, being a virtual student in the virtual school, whether you're in a live class or on demand, is the wealth of knowledge that you have access to, the wealth of resources that you'll have access to. And so you wanna make sure that you tap into that, use everything that the teachers would have put up for you whether it's worksheets, whether it's videos or PowerPoints, and then you even have the option, I want to learn more, I want to see what else I can actually do. And we're going to have an option for you on the website for frequently asked questions. So if you're not sure on what it is that you have to do, whether it's in terms of getting into your class, whether it's in terms of accessing your resources, or even simply you want to ask your teacher a question, you want to be able to post that and we want to make sure that we're able to answer those questions for you.